Pervetuloa. Bienvenido. To sleep drunk. To sleep drunk. <laughs> Where it's not for nothing. Yep. Um, Alex, wondering what languages spoke there? Uh, I have no clue, honestly. Yeah. See, I was checking our listener statistics the other day, and I found out, like, 23% of our audience is from Finland. So that was my attempt at saying... I noticed saying, that on the map. I was just like, all right, Finland. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, to all our Finnish viewers, I hope I said that correctly. <laughs> yeah, shout out to the Finns. <laughs> yep, shout out, shout out to all them. I mean, it's a pretty sizable amount when you think about it. Like, 23. Like, we've yeah. crossed... We crossed like 120 downloads. Is it just 23 ago. total listens from Finland? No, no, like it's different percent, individual percent. people. It's percents. A percentage. Uh, I'm sorry. It's percentage of our stupid. downloads. So it's like we crossed 120 a while ago in downloads. So that it's a pretty sizable chunk of Finnish ears instances have heard our show. So if you're yeah, in I'm Finland, uh, big shout out. I'm gonna head over to and check it our check our statistics. Well, while I do that, um, why don't I explain what we got loaded for the show today? So um, we're gonna be starting out with a little look into how we make the show and our production process because we're now 18 episodes in. I think we have a pretty good like flow and process. I figured now's a good time to share with you guys, giving you insights. If you have any suggestions, we're open to them. And then after that, we'll swing by Discussion Avenue and end off. Um, with a reprise of an old segment that we hope you guys will like. So, Alex, why don't we start with the first phase of recording? How do you think? Where would you say that the whole process of an episode starts? So the whole process of an episode starts in the middle of the week, where we decide when we're gonna record. Like, is mm-hmm. at least of right now that this yeah. process has changed. Yeah. It used to be where we tried to record the day after we would upload, and that way we'd have a whole week to edit, and then we mm-hmm. never used it. But now, like, we could use it now that we're not in school, but don't and record. Yeah, I, I don't know. We're just yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, frankly, I feel like having the episodes a bit closer to upload makes it a bit better because that way Discussion Avenue was more relevant. It is. It's not two weeks ago. It's a week ago. It's just roughly. rushed, but it, like I don't even know if I would not rush it. So I don't know. Yeah, back back in school, you, like we'd record what Saturday to upload on Friday. You do all the editing on like Thursday. <laughs> yeah, but I think and then we just that, like decided to push it back to Saturday yeah. because pushing on Friday is really hard, especially yeah. when you have things to do during the week. Yeah, but I mean, when you think about it, really, we started like I'd say before we even get the recording day is like the idea fermentation process. Where, well, that's really your whole bit, yeah. so I guess you probably should have yeah. started that off. But I mean, the, yeah. the pre-planning is what I was getting yeah, at, fair, is like deciding fair. when to record. Yeah. And then I guess you, or since you're the writer, yeah, creative you, uh, director, our, our topics, yeah, yeah. I mean, for me, it's like we do have a running index of topics. Like, so what we do is we have this big Google Drive folder just called Sleep Drunk, and we there we have like show notes, stuff for the blog, um, audio, and everything there, right? And so one of those is a folder just called Show Notes, where we have a generic template. So we just like copy that, and then that's how we start out all of our show notes. And so um, normally we do have a running index, but most of the time I just come up with stuff on the spot because I feel like it's fresher. And really the index is just more there if we really have nothing, like really nothing. And so I mean, yeah, everyone gets their writer's block times. Yeah, so. yeah. Or like if we're busy or if something happens like the index, I feel like originally it was just kind of we're going to pull off of it, but that's kind of more the role I feel like it's realized into. And so I'll normally come up with a couple of topics and I'll pitch them to Alex. Like, I'll just send him a message and be like, hey, um, here is, here are the ideas. I've never once had an issue with any of your topics, I don't think. I mean, there was that one that we had back during spring break where I brought up potentially doing a dark web episode and that got some backlash from you and Michael. Was that back then? Michael was on the show. But I mean, I'm still down for that segment. (laughs) I mean, now that you're in India and your internet connection isn't, you know, my dorm room. (laughs) That's I mean, it's, it's it's Tor browser. Like they're not gonna. But also, like I did, like I did a bit of initial poking. I did I don't find care some really interesting what stuff. You say downloading Tor browser in itself is kind of an admission to guilt. <laughs> yeah, you could. I mean, but I did find this really interesting blog about Virginia Tech and like these students that explore the steam tunnels under Virginia Tech. And I thought I feel that like could that's be an like interesting something topic. that would be on the surface web. Like, oh no, it's illegal. But like, it's a misdemeanor. Yeah, but there's plenty of illegal things on the surface web. Yeah, but I mean, it's there. And it's cool. Uh, who knows? Maybe if you guys want to hear the um, d- dark web segment, you can tweet us at Sleep Drunk PC or reach us on any of our social medias, and we'll get back to you. Um, and sure. we might get on the show. We'll try. But so yeah, I'll come up with some ideas. We'll put two up, and then we have we, like the way we format our show notes. Pretty simply, we just have like a bunch of bullet points, and they're like nested. So we have like introduction, topic, discussion, avenue, topic two, and inclusion. 
<laughs> and so I think that wraps up basically planning. And so now we get to where we are right now, actually recording. So Alex, so what the software do we thing, use? <laughs> yeah, so we both use a copy of Adobe Audition. No further comment on that. <laughs> and what we do currently, at least, is get together on a morning for me and a, an evening for him. As of now, at and, least while I'm in India. This actually be my last recording here for a bit, but yeah, continue. Yeah, and then we start a new audio file and audition. Mm -hmm. um, we prefer... Actually, yeah, I guess we record to 32-bit waves mm -hmm. um, just to keep that lo whole lot of loss. Yeah. That's even higher than our microphones uh, bus even supports, but yep. you know, is what it is. And then we pull up time.is, get on a Slack call, mm -hmm. and just kind of go for it, you know? Clap some cheeks, you know, get that. See, the reason that we have- cat purring going on. Yep. Hi, Java. Yep. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Well, I mean, the reason we use time.is is because um, it's to help sync up the audio. And so, yeah, so time.is is like basically as accurate as it gets. And it's a separate instance, basically. Like it's it's an independent server, right? And so we both sync to that. And that's how we keep our, that's how we keep the, um, all the tracks in check. Because, you know, I am, of course, on the other side of the planet. Alex is on the other side of the planet from me. And so it's kind of hard to record in the same room. Because that's what we used to actually for up until episode... I want to say five or six we recorded in the same room. We just yeah, using the mic. same microphone. And then we tried to yeah. record with two microphones in the same room, and the audio oh, issues that stemmed so from that bad. were unbearable. <laughs> it was awful. Yeah, I think I was, I was the one editing on deck for I'm the episode where we did that. Because my cat doesn't want to leave it alone. Oof. Now I gotta cock my head awkwardly sideways. Mm. Rough times. Yep. So, actually, on the topic of microphones, um, do you want to explain what kind of gear we're using? Since I believe we have basically the same gear. Yeah, so aside from software, the only thing we have is um, a microphone that is just the ATR2500 USB condenser microphone. Pretty good Audio for the price, I would say. Um, USB microphones obviously aren't the best, but you know, when it comes to starting a show on a budget, it's pretty good. Yeah. And yeah. we have that mounted to a newer um, spring-loaded boom arm, which is, I mean, it gets the job done. Not yeah, really much yeah. else to say about it. It's not pretty, but it's, I mean, it works. It's definitely functional. not pretty. <laughs> And it's then like, I, we both have ours mounted on a shock mount with a windscreen thing yep, strapped yep. to the front of it. And I have duct tape over my recording indicator light because it's really bright. I just kind of like opened mine up, my the casing to my microphone up one day and bent the LED down. And then I think it's died <laughs> since then. So yeah. yeah, I just I just I think when I, when I first got, it, I was like, oh, that's really bright. And we were in Alex's room back in the dorm, so I just kind of grabbed some. I've had this tape. microphone for absolutely ever. So yeah, I think you know. I picked mine up off eBay. It was in a bundle, actually, with, like, a uh, windscreen, uh, like, separate windscreen. Like, I have the kind that's, like, we both have the kind where it's a, like, half circle around it, around the microphone. We also have the kind where it's, like, a disc that stands in front of it. So, I, I don't use that one, but I came with it, and it came with a shock mount. And so, I got it off eBay for, I think, like, 75 free sh like, with free shipping. So, it was, I think, very good. It's a great mic. I really like it. But, yeah, so, that is our... Um, that's our gear. And so recording, it's pretty straightforward. Like there are bits where you don't hear them because we'll be like, oh, hey, let's transition segments or, um, oh, cut that out or stuff like that. But recording is pretty straightforward. We just kind of stand in front of our computers or sit and talk for roughly an hour. I like uh, squatting in front of my computer. <laughs> yeah. I mean, actually, pure, I'm actually pirouetting right now. Like my desk is mounted to my body and I'm spinning. Mm -hmm. It's pretty kinky. <laughs> all right <laughs> so now becomes alex's favorite part of actually not favorite part your favorite parts later but i think probably yeah, the most time consuming later. part of the production which is, is the editing. editing so Editing's the fun. editing process <laughs> is fun it's i mean okay it's it's pretty straightforward honestly it's just exactly what you'd expect alavi uploads his audio file to the google drive i go download it and whenever I get a chance, usually not even before we're supposed to release, because, you know, that's how it works. <laughs> and I, I load that into a multi-track session with Audition. Um, we use the podcast preset and then just change some of the settings ourselves. Mm -hmm. So every track automatically, every voice track has the speech leveler edition. So mm -hmm. 
I keep the thing at negative 18 and then I change the other two to 50 and 50. I, mm -hmm. I don't even know what they are. I just know at this point that those are the best values for us. And mm -hmm. possibly, you know, you, I, if you're trying to do this, I don't know. I mean, I use the, I, I think I set up a custom leveler a while ago where I like adjust the dynamic range a little bit. Um, so I, I use that one. I, forget, I don't know what the exact settings are, but it's like slightly different. Yeah. And then I add the adaptive noise reduction thing to just keep mm -hmm. down um, background noise and, you know, droning things like AC and stuff. And yes. Maybe even cats purring. Mm hmm. <laughs> and then from there, we use a hard limiter that stops it at half a decibel below yeah. zero so that it can't, you know, peak and sound terrible. So it doesn't and peak. <laughs> Yeah, that. And then a lobby requires a de -esser. I yes. don't ever put that on myself, but yeah. Yeah. And I know when I do the editing, I also... I've done this a few times where I tried to use noise reduction to clear out breaths and failed horribly. But sometimes I will go and silence specific parts that I think sound a bit off. Like, there'll be times where my mic technique is bad because I'm brushing. And so you'll hit, like you'll hear, like, nose whistling. And so sometimes I'll go and manually silence parts where that's sort of bad. But yeah. And then also, of course, we have our song of the day where we splice in and... We, the way we used to do it actually was we would do a rough cut, right? Like we just cut, get everything together. Then we go back and listen to the whole show again, and just keep our ears open for swearing, so that, that was we can just censor awful, it. Though. I, I, I it hated was awful. that, and it was so time consuming. Yeah, it was. It took us, I think, like total production would be like seven hours almost. Like when you put everything it was together just with that. Yeah. So now we've tried to just start. Um, like when we go through for the first pass, we just hit the M key on anything yeah. that's you know us swearing, and that leaves a little marker. Yeah. And then we can go back and edit in some uh, some music over it later. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I um, I'm not particularly good at maintaining my attention to that, so most, I I probably miss like yeah. three every episode. I don't yeah. know. Just I'm enough to keep us on it. iTunes. Yeah, I'm a bit better with it. I think I get most of them, but yeah, it's a whole lot of ADD. <laughs> or actually, that's supposed to, supposedly an outdated term, ADHD. Is, Whatever. No. Aren't they different? I thought they were different disorders. No, just ADD is inattentive ADHD. No. Okay. Okay. Well, that's that's not my field of expertise. But yeah. So editing is pretty straightforward. Then we just then we do we have to chapterize it after we're done cutting it up. Like we just run these huge. See, the way we used to do it is that we would put markers in, and then Alex would send the file to me, and I would use Forecast on my computer. Because my computer is a Mac, and Forecast is a like Mac exclusive application. So I would use that to encode it, encode in metadata and chapters. But we just figured out how to do that in Audition, and so Alex just does it in Audition. Like, it's yeah, it's not really that not that bad. difficult. The yeah. one thing that I I have a have beef with an Audition is the fact that it requires you to um, export your multi track thing as an MP3, and then open that MP3 in order to set the album art in the ID3 metadata, uh, okay. which is really annoying. Okay, I didn't realize that. Yeah, because whenever I do that, I just use Forecast because Forecast is a very nice application. Like, it just looks good. And I mean, it auditions just smoothly. functional. Yeah, I mean, no, it's functional, but like, it's also just... You, but also, nice Forecast is nice. like, hey, everyone should record on Mac. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, no, that is a problem. That. That, that is a problem. You know, I, I have to voice another Mac grievance that I have. So, yesterday... I was uh, messing around on my mom's computer. Mm -hmm. I was trying to start up a one of my Ubuntu virtual machines on that's loaded on my external solid state drive, and I was trying to put uh, start it up on her laptop. And the reason behind that is her laptop's getting very old. She has a 2011 model MacBook Air, and in OS 10 Mojave, Ooh. they drop support for that laptop, so it's going down the tubes quickly. And yeah. soon she's going to need a new laptop, and I don't feel comfortable recommending any Apple laptops in the current day. And I don't know that I trust her with a Windows laptop. So I think I'm going to have her buy a Windows laptop and then wipe the whole thing and put a copy of Linux on it. I mean, you could always go with an older gen. Like I have, I'm running a 2015 Retina MacBook Pro and but I quite like it. I'm going to drop it in like a few years. I think this one's going to have support for a while. It's because it's so relatively recent. Like I think it's only... I mean, it's four years newer than the one she has. Yeah. That's... Yeah, that's, that's fair. That's not, and I, I think mean, after that is a dongle town, so yeah. Like, if I could just get an easily serviceable laptop like my old Lenovo or something, that would be the ultimate, because then if anything yeah. goes wrong with it, I know how to open it up and, yeah. you know, replace whatever's wrong with it. <laughs> you can but try making a Hackintosh. <laughs> that's... I need something reliable. 
that's just fair. a no for me. Yeah, yeah, that, that's a bad idea. Hackintoshes are fun hobby things if you want to do yeah, that. But, but not something to give to someone that isn't very tech savvy. <laughs> yes, it's not a daily driver. Basically, I just need something that runs Chrome and I guess LibreOffice or Adobe Acrobat, something like that. And then... <laughs> Did um, someone say Chrome? VNC. That way I can connect to way, you know, connect to it wherever I am and help uh, solve issues that arise. But fair, fair. I've been playing around with other Linux distros and I've come across the fact that Ubuntu is just Ubuntu and Fedora are the only two distros that just work. Yep. I remember I've, I've experimented was a with big many Ubuntu others. Guy. Like um DBN, it it's just it comes with those awful video drivers and just has quirks to it and you have to load all your own stuff onto it. And I've tried Manjaro, which is based on Arch Linux, and I just I had trouble with Arch Linux, and the package stream is really annoying. I don't know, but the the Debian stream and the Red Hat stream, which comes from Fedora, are just the two most reliable, and Ubuntu is based on Debian. Okay. And anyway, yeah. back to because we're we're pretty far in tangential land. Yeah. Back yep, to yep. the tangent that I was originally on. I was trying to start up a Ubuntu VM, and I was installing VirtualBox because that's the software that I use on my computer to run this virtual machine. Mm-hmm. And macOS blocks the installer for VirtualBox, and I, I get really? this installation failed thing. So I got to check the security and privacy menu where it like allows you to run apps from different developers and stuff. They used to have an option for an anywhere, like sources anywhere button, and they removed that. And now it's either the App Store or the App Store and identified developers. Huh. So it was on this, the latter option. Mm-hmm. And then it said that it blocked a thing by Oracle Software America or whatever. And there was an allow button. Okay. If you clicked the allow button, it wouldn't do anything. I went and researched this issue. And it was because the software thought that the built in trackpad was an emulated mouse. So, like, it was some sort of faux security feature. That's so here's the bolt that I had to do in order to get it to work. Mac OS has a built-in script editor. I think that's what it's called. Um, I found this... Okay, and the, the, the language for that is really just god-awful. But yeah, I found the language for it online, and I wrote a small script. I took a screenshot of the desktop with the system preferences window, and I measured the coordinates down to the allow button. And then I had the script click at those coordinates, and then it worked. But somehow that emulated mouse click was not detected as an emulated mouse click with the software, but the physical trackpad was detected as an emulated mouse click. That's really weird, and I'm not sure what to say to that, because that's just not a use case I've experienced, but that sounds miserable, and I apologize In short, for that. thanks, Apple. I have sympathize. I got around I, your stupid bolt anyway. I, I sympathize, or empathize. One of the two. I thighs with you. <laughs> I Thanks, thighs. man. Thanks for thighsing with me. I mean, you know, thighsing is important, you know? Like, thighsing yeah, and thighs thee, like, thee is one of those soft skills that, like, the employers are looking for now. You gotta have, like, empathy and sympathy and just, you gotta No, thee. definitely, I know. You, you gotta, gotta have some thighs. nice, thick thighs. You gotta have some nice, thick thighs and some nice, shiny thighs. So, back to what we were talking about, um, this this topic. Um, once we're done editing is Alex's favorite part. I, I know that is definitely without doubt his favorite part. And that is the post editing. Post editing is always fun because it's yep. just like you're done with the major part of the project, which is the editing. And then you have to do a bunch of stupid little things. And yeah. you're just you're just already at that point fed up with the whole thing and you just want to leave. But yeah. you can't because you have to do all this. Yep. So this mainly involves going to our... Um, what is it called? An aggregator podcast Our host. hosting service, whatever. Our hosting yeah. service, yeah. And um, and upload the episode, put in some show notes and information with it that I mm-hmm. already put in the file, but for some reason it can't already read. Mm-hmm. Um, and then get the player code, put that on the home screen of the website, and then upload all the show notes into the website and encode the show notes in HTML because when you copy and paste them from a Google Drive document, they aren't already encoded in HTML. Mm-hmm. And then that involves just putting like A tags, putting the links in there, and then putting BR tags to format it properly, blah, blah, blah. Yep. Honestly, I didn't even check it last time to make sure everything is displaying right because usually there, I always make some sort of mistake. I think I checked it and it seemed right. I guess checked it. For yeah, I reasons, fixed a spelling but... error. Um, oh, did I have that's one? That's the only thing. 
Yeah. No, okay. I actually, I got it all right for once. That's oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. And I think on my side for post for like post publishing, I make up all the display notes. And so I just kind of have to go around, gather all the links, bitly them so they're nice and manageable, and then paste them. So I, I make two versions. Um, we have basically every single show notes folder contains the what we call the format document and the display document. So the format document is what like I'm looking at right now, which just like has all the information for like what to read out what we're talking about. And the yeah, display document the is what you guys are hopefully seeing in the show notes right now. And so I make two versions. I make one for things that support um, HTML liking and things that don't, like YouTube. Mainly YouTube. Like this is huge flock that says the YouTube version in Comic Sans. And so what I do is I, I don't do that one first. So I'll just like get the link, paste it in there, and then I'll copy it off there and just make the embedded links. And yeah, YouTube, just please allow allow like good linking. I forgot what the nah, dude. hyperlinking. And also YouTube is just kind of a pain in the ass because for some reason it just never gets uploaded and never works the way we want it to. Yeah. And it's it take, kinda, see, I think it's that might effort. be... Then we have to make a thumbnail. Yeah. Here's the thing. I think that might be on... So our host is Podbean. And I think it might be on their end because the way we have it set up, we used to just make a video ourselves and then put it up, but that's a pain. Yeah, and so what really we do is we just... We have Podbean, which is our host. They have an option where you just kind of like click a button and it makes the video for you. And I think that might just be on their end making the video and getting it uploaded. So, because YouTube uploading in and of itself, because I used to have a really YouTube channel. And so, YouTube uploading in and of itself can be weird sometimes. Every now and then it gets stuck at 95% processing. Because the way it uploads, then it has to process it. Like, it has to scale it for YouTube and, like, do a copyright scan. And so, yeah, I think the combination it, um, of makes that different versions and... versions so you can change your, uh, your quality. Yeah. And, like, I'm also not sure if, like, Podbean is using, like, some epic editing rig or if it's kind of, like, I don't know, using a Chromebook. Um, so, very I mean, well it's might just be just taking some overloaded forever. server. Yeah, probably. Probably. But, so, I think that might just be on Podbean's end. If you work at Podbean, uh, we'd love to love to hear from you and you can, you can come on the show, you know? You can, uh, you can talk yeah, about this to us. Explain talk to your, our podcast host. Yeah, explain the back end, you know? Because you, you are our back end, Podbean. Yeah, yeah. And so then, once things drop on YouTube, normally I'm the one that does the YouTube stuff. So Alex, just shoot me the I thumbnail. I need to move my cat. She's causing too much noise. She just wants to rub every individual piece of my microphone. Stop. You're, you're getting annoying at this point, Java. Like you're cute and all, but like you gotta go. Sorry. Okay, um, I'm back. Okay, I suppose about to start throwing throw to fill in the time. Um, but so, normally I'm the one that handles all the YouTube stuff, so if something is bad on YouTube, you blame me. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just, once the video is up, we should, I think it's sometimes up to like an hour after upload. Can but, I just bring up something? Mm-hmm. Every time you say witch, I've noticed you always say weech. Do I? Yes. Which? <laughs> At least on here. Which? It's like you kind of stumble over it and like mess it up and say weech or something, I don't know. Huh. Just something I've noticed. Well, wasn't aware of that. I'm not not sure I feel about that, but regardless. <laughs> so what I'll end up doing is I take care so I post in the like the description in the description I put our show notes. And then sometimes I have to update the tags, sometimes I don't. It just pod beans weird. And so if the pot if the tags aren't there, I'll update the tags. And then I put up the thumbnail and then it's done. Yeah, and, I mean, it's probably it has its quirks, but yeah. all in all, it's a pretty good value yeah. host over yeah, is, other for sure, for aggregators, sure. like especially yeah. Libsyn. It's just kind yeah. of overpriced. <sighs> Libsyn's expensive. Yeah, but I mean, the thing is, they give us unlimited hosting, which is what we wanted because our episodes for a weekly show are pretty long, all things considered. Like most weekly yeah, and shows weekly. are like, like twenty we, minutes. We tried Buzzsprout's free plan, but the episode <laughs> deleting thing was pretty annoying, and the fact and that we, we, we crossed had our limit space in two limits episodes. was also very annoying. So yeah. Then again, we also went over our allotted time once, and they just sort of didn't do anything well, no, about so it. What they do is they they allow that to go up, but they block any more uploads for that month. Oh, so I think because I think after so you could totally two, juke that. maybe three episodes in that month, we exceed our limit, and so we ended up migrating off Buzzsprout was a pain. <laughs> also, for some reason, like okay, I switched away from a bank. A while ago because they were just notorious for blocking your card everywhere you mm -hmm, went mm -hmm. um and i moved to bank of america and i've never had bank of america ever block a purchase for me 
for mm-hmm. some reason they were blocking our subscription to Podbean and I couldn't figure out what it was so I had to put it on my credit card and like I don't know I just found it interesting like yep. I feel like that's not that out of the ordinary for me to subscribe to some online service but I don't know I don't know I mean hmm yeah that is actually really weird thinking back yeah well hmm. but yeah just switching off off Buzzsprout was a huge pain in the ass though because for those who don't Buzzsprout know how does make it easy because they actually include a way to forward your um rss your rss feed yeah over, that's true that's true nice i feel like if, if it was something else would have been a lot harder but um it's just it like i think the main thing yeah, was just switching spotify like- i think it was just spotify that was being difficult with us yeah because spotify does theirs weird yeah like it's and that's also a great thing that google podcasts didn't mm-hmm. um index us until we were already at the new host yeah and I because think Apple Podcasts over within like just two really days. weird. The Apple Podcast switched over within a day or two. And that just it took Spotify a while, but other than that, it was pretty simple. But yeah. yeah. Does that basically wrap up the production process? I mean, I guess technically an episode isn't fully complete until we give the Song of the Day shout out in the next episode. So, eh. But yeah. <laughs> All right, so now that we have our production process out of the way, I think it's time to cook up a batch of meth of chat (laughs) and our RV of debate that we have parked along Discussion Avenue. Yeet. All right. Um, Good thing to know, because I am actually in a different location. I may or may not be in the RV. Because I'm no longer in my closet. Wait, you're not watching the cook? That's gonna blow up if you don't watch oh. it, dude. Um, I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, having taken the meth off the cook, it is now mething. And so, um, back to how my week was. Week was actually pretty low key, all things considered. Didn't do too much. I have something I want to show you in a second, so I'll save that for a bit after I do my quick um, recap. But I basically just been going to work and then coming back, playing Destiny. Uh, another another call out. Um, if you want to join me, um, my nor- my normal crew are they're all out of town for the week, and so and he I need people. Needs Destiny friends. I I like I mean I'm Iron Banners up. Um, so I, it's nice to have a team for that. Been running Menagerie. Um, Destiny, I think it's probably it's the best it's been. Period in all like five years of its existence. It's just it's fantastic, and I'm actually working on a blog post now about kind of the evolution of the game and the franchise, and so expect that at some point. I'm kind of bad with blog posts, but I'm working on it. Yeah, I'm pretty bad with yeah. blog posts too. I yeah. thought I'd post more, but I just yeah. don't ever feel like. I it. mean, and actually, on the topic of blog posts, that gives me a really nice segue. So you and I are both college students, that is, or I guess if you live in the rest of the world, university students, and we do yes. a lot of writing. I think in college you write a lot, and so my default has been for a while google docs but as of late i've been having some issues with it just like with speed and bugginess and it might just be on the internet but i thought i would explore a few other writing applications and so of course most people think microsoft word is the default but i figured that like i want to at least give other options a try and look around and i did a bit of research and i found that among like actual writers like people who write for a living and write a lot word mm-hmm. is like it's a like a cursed application because i found out that initially microsoft word was meant for typesetting not composition so it's meant to take a block of text and make it printable and make it something that you can present right that's what a word processor is. yeah yeah exactly exactly but i think a lot of people use it most people use it for composition for like the initial creation of the writing and well, that's why they have updated it and adapted it over the years. Oh no, they have, they have. And I've I've been using Word Online. I've been trying it out for my internship. I think like, I figured I'd give it a try. Admit, Microsoft Office is not perfect, but I just feel like it's good enough yeah. and no, it's think, better than Google Docs, and that's my yeah. go-to. I've never had any severe issues with it. So you see, I've not either, but like I do, I do like it. I think it is powerful and it's really useful. But for me personally, especially for research, because it yeah. has the um, Zotero plugin, and yeah. Zotero is just amazing. Yeah. Actually, one thing I want to mention, I'll bring this up later in the rest of research. But um, actually, I do like Microsoft Word, but I've been using Word Online, and there's one thing that really f-ing annoys me so much. Word so, Online. Well, yeah, it's because like Why I did you use that. Well, I'm just giving it a try because I figured why not? Like, I don't feel like shelling out for a full word license right now. 
and so, school offers it for free you know see i thought it was just i thought it was that the office office 365 and um board online office so 365 is for desktop they said okay well okay regardless i didn't feel like now that i know that things might change but so i was using word online and there's one thing that really really annoyed me and so the way word online is formatted is that there is a menu icon and the next to the menu icon there is a like hierarchy of like a basic directory guide right so it like shows what folder and what the document is and both the arrow that shows which way the like that shows the um directory location and the menu icon are both raster images and they're slightly off resolution and it makes oh, me so for retina mad. displays and it always looks bad yeah i mean also it's nine cubes or nine squares that should be a vector it makes sense for that to be a vector it's nine squares that's probably the most simple vector you can make except that for a triangle which is what they use for the um like for the directory arrows why not make those vectors it's just it's just so slightly off resolution and it makes me very very upset and i don't I've like notice that with a lot of things having a high resolution screen is nice but you just yeah. always those things always bother yeah, you'll you. you'll find places where there should be vectors and there aren't vectors for those who don't know a vector is a type of image where the image like bounds are defined by lines not pixels and so yeah, instead of having that way it's infinitely scalable yeah, yeah so instead of having a like a grid of pixels you have a bunch of mathematical equations and the and problem so, that's the prob the the very problem with raster images is that i mean they have their place obviously but because they're based on pixels they cannot be scaled higher than their native mm -hmm. resolution and yeah. if they're scaled lower they have to be scaled to an even multiple yes. of their resolution otherwise, otherwise, otherwise they just look blurry yeah and so like rasters have their usage and actually, but they're used a lot in GIS data because you can use it to like for grids and stuff. I can talk about that at some other point. But so that just really mildly annoyed me. And I was listening just I was just at work today listening to some like Cortex, some old episodes of Cortex. And I remember them bring up a few different writing apps. So I thought I'd look into it. And so I know you mentioned research, and I found an application called Scrivener, which is way too powerful for me, but has a ton of potential for research. Like so much potential. Is it open source, free, paid? Oh no, it's it's paid. The student version is thirty eight dollars one time, which is on the pricier side, but it's less a word I processor. I mean, honestly, that's acceptable. Yeah, for, yeah If exactly. it's a good tool, like I yeah. paid, I forget. I want to say around fifty dollars for a year license of um, yeah. Wolfram Alpha because it's yeah. just that useful. Yeah. No, no. Scrivener is thirty eight dollars. You own it forever, um, and so it's. It's set up as an environment for writing, and so you make projects, and it gathers all of your data for that project. You can really quickly, snappily access it. So, for example, like you're working on a paper, you can have your paper in like one panel in the application, and in the other panel, you can have like flashcards of like your major notes and like big citations. You can like quickly view those, swap, swap between them. I'm trying it out on trial, and I'll let you guys know more about it. I think it's a bit overkill for me, but I found something else which I think I might actually go for, and it's called Bear. And so the reason I want to go for it is because one of the main reasons I use Google Docs is that I really like the cross device syncing. Like there's a lot of times where I'll start something on my computer, then go and finish on my phone. Like I remember um, for AP Lang, I wrote all of my essays on my phone because my computer broke and I did damn good in that class. <laughs> but so ever since then, I have really valued cross saving. But the thing is that Google Docs has issues. It's not that powerful. And so Bear, it, it's a subscription service, but I think it's very reasonable. It's fourteen ninety nine a year, and it has cross syncing. There's a free version too. It has cross syncing. It has really nice themes, and it's also designed as an environment for writing, not as a word processor. And the UI looks really good. And I think the most important thing, I think the feature that we all need, is it can export your essay as a JPEG. <laughs> I've always wanted to export all of my I essays mean, as JPEGs. Essay.jpeg. Like you send your professor essay.jpeg. <laughs> I have no idea why it can do that, but it can. Along with all the other formats like ODT, DOCX, and PDF. But What's that? You wanted to reformat my essay so that you could read it easier? <laughs> no. <year? laughs> no. You want to use a plagiarism checker? No. Have fun reading a raster image of my essay. <laughs> but yeah, essay.jpeg can be a thing. So I might try Bear out. And also Bear has a super nice UI and they have cross-syncing and a lot of really good features. And also they're constantly updating it. 
like it's always being updated and they're adding stuff and so like i think 14.99 a year is very reasonable and i have no issues pay- and they also have a month free trial and so i might give that a look and update you guys on that later now before i pass off to alex i just want to send you a video real quick you don't have to watch like the first minute but i found this on um on youtube it's on the trending page on number one a few days ago i know the trending page is trash but just just give it a look give me a second i'll look it up yeah i can't say i've ever looked at the trending page it's it's not good but every now and then i just i like to see what they decide to put up there just like to get an understanding of what because at first you know youtube trending is very much curated it is not like an algorithmic thing i just beat that music there i just want you to see the watch like the first 30 seconds of this and I'll explain to you what I I put this in one of my in one of my group chats, and I called it a very specific thing. So I, I want you to see this. Have you seen the first few seconds of it? I've watched fifty seconds of it. Okay, okay. You don't don't you don't need to watch it anymore. You've seen what you need to see. And so when I first found this song, I put it into one of my group chats, and I described it as it's it treads the line between intentionally like low fidelity, like that's a, that's a style now for music videos. So it very much straddles the line between that. And made on a 2007 low end Toshiba laptop with a pirated video editor. Yeah, that's very the vibe much I was straddles getting. that line. I feel like there, there's no way that it was in, like aside from the 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 moves, like those I think were maybe intentionally low fidelity, but the the quality of the video itself, like those effects like, were uh, were making me <laughs> die a little. One of the aside. comments was like, director said, "Yo, I got this green screen. You want to try it out?" Um, for those you know, um, I'll put I'll put a link in the show notes, but it's. It's um, Free Young Boy by NLE Chapa, shot by FTY Studios One. Um, one, because you can get the one. regular one. Yeah. But yeah, so you... it, just, it very much straddles that line. Like, the intentionally lo fi aesthetic is a thing, but that is just. That was the... just made with Windows Movie Maker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I feel like they might, there might just be a Hypercam logo that they cropped out. No, like, actually, like, in, re- in all reality most all people that you know professionally produce videos are going to go use after effects and premiere yeah that was definitely made in sony vegas <laughs> yeah or no it's probably made without with, like, a see, doubt. what i was thinking is that they might have made it with a vivo video right which is a really crappy free web-based video editor is, is web-based and oh, God. i guess they might have put black bars around it because they put a really big watermark because I saw someone use it for a project in high school. It was disgusting. Um, but they probably took that, downloaded it, put it in Windows Movie Maker, and cropped it in so they could cut out the watermark. <laughs> but but you, you guys can see it. You only have to watch like 30 seconds to get what we're ta- going at. But the song itself is fine. Like, also, I have no he was doing it, the Sean dance. But it's a video. <laughs> but yeah, that basically did, wraps did you up notice my, that? That wraps up my discussion with Alex. How, how have you been? Did you notice the Sean dance, though? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I did. I did. Anyway. <laughs> so, um, pretty good. Let me see. I gotta check my calendar to see what I've been up to. So, let's see. We recorded a week ago? Mm-hmm. Well, roughly a week ago. Actually, exactly. Yep. So, not too much has happened. I uh, closed Friday night. I don't remember what I did on Saturday. Just kind of booing, you know. I did a double shift on Sunday um, as a food runner on Father's Day. That was interesting. Uh, very, very tiring. And, but I, you know, I, I made a good money. The funny story about that, though, that we had this problem all day Sunday where I don't know if anybody that listens to this works in the restaurant industry, but if you do, then you know what 86 means. And,. The the term 86 this, 86 that was thrown around constantly all day. 86 means, say, if someone places an order and you're just writing it down real quick, it's just a quick way of writing, you know, leave this off my meal. But if someone comes through, running through the kitchen shouting 86 and then the name of a dish, that means that we are missing a key component to the dish and cannot make it. Oh. And... We also keep a board where if someone hears someone shout 86, you're supposed to go write it on the board. 
the board has a little area for 86 items. Mm -hmm. It was completely full. Like, you could not write anymore. Wow. It. it was spilling out. That, that seems rough. And people were, like, getting upset left and right, understandably so, because they came in on Father's Day to get something that they wanted, and we couldn't make it. So that was always fun. And then um, Calculus got my first exam back. I got 100. Nice, nice, nice. So, uh, yeah, that class is going pretty well. That's good, that's good. And that's just been about my week. I went and booled last night with Ryan. Is that about it? <laughs> yep, that's it. Actually, there's one more thing I wanted to mention that I forgot now that you've completed. Um, I So I'm not in my usual place. I My normal recording place when I'm here in India is my closet because it's nice. Because it, it's a good environment, because it, like, it's good for dampening. But right now I'm not in my closet, I'm in my brother's room. And that's because I have um, not one, not two, but three house guests. Um, two of which are here for what? Like, so the way it's set up is um, two of them are my mom's aunt and uncle, so my grand aunt and grand uncle, and they're here for medical reasons. Because my, my home has just kind of become a medical hotel. Because if someone in Bangladesh is, they're sick, guess where they're staying when they come to Delhi for treatment? Because there is actually, like... So the way Delhi is set up, it has a sister city called Gurgaon. And in Gurgaon, there is a really good hospital. Like, there's one of the best hospitals in the world. And so people go there. People from Bangladesh come, they go there. And so guess whose house they stay at? Yours. Stay at mine. And to top it off, not only are they here, but... My dad's older brother's here, my uncle. He's visiting too. And so normally what'll happen is so my we live in a duplex apartment, so we have like a upper floor and a lower floor. So my bedroom is where the guest room would be on the lower floor. But because I wanted a bigger room because my the only option would be like really small room that was really cramped. And so I wanted a bigger room. So I thought, you know what, I'll I'll take that room. And when we have people that are here for medical reasons, last time we'll just let them take the lower room because going up and down the stairs can be a bit tough. And so we left them have the lower room and then I go upstairs and sleep in what is our usual guest room. But then my uncle shows up, and so I spent two days in the regular guest room, and then moved to my brother's room, where I'm here now, and he has graciously let me kick him out to record. And so, yeah, um, if you're listening, he does listen to the show, um, thanks, shout out, yeah. So that's that's <laughs> fun. And it's like, we want, like, we're, we're leaving for the States in actually exactly one week. We'll be taking off, I think, one week and an hour um, from when we're recording. Actually, no, one week exactly from when we're recording, we'll be taking off. And... They have to stay longer than we're taking off. Like they're gonna, they have to stay until like after we leave. And so we just kind of like give them our house key. We're not sure what we're gonna do with that. Hopefully, you work that out. But yeah, hopefully, uh, yeah. Because it's like <laughs> hospitality is taken really, really seriously in Bengali culture. At least in my experience, it's like an example is if someone comes over to your house, it's basically mandatory that you offer them tea and snacks most of the time a meal. But like that's like mandatory. You offer them some snacks. That's what you do. Like it's it's like it's rude if you. It's like not rude, but it's like a huge faux pas if you don't. And so it's like if someone comes to your city, hmm. especially for medical reasons, and you deny them a place to stay or say, hey, we might not be able to facilitate it. It's it's kind of it's, it's bad. And so we're at a point where I have taken my brother's room, and I'm not good at sharing beds with people because I snore and kick. And so my brother has moved to my mom's room, my mom and dad's room, where they have, like, this odd side couch slash bed, and he's sleeping there. And I've, I've just hijacked his room, and I feel really bad. So Why I'm didn't sorry. you just go in there? Um, Because it's it's too small for me. <laughs> like, I'd fall out. Oof. And also, like, my also like my brother, like, is he's, he can sleep in more places. Like, he can comfortably sleep there, whereas I would have a ton of trouble. So, yeah, mm. sorry. So, like, he's um, one of those people who can sleep on hardwood floor and just Oh, be he has sleep. regularly, actually. He likes it. <laughs> Here's the thing. Apparently, okay. once you get used to it, it's very good for your back. Like, actually really good for your back once you get used to it. That's great. I'm, I won't be trying it. Yeah, no, I won't either. I, I won't, unless I have to, I'm not trying. But, yeah, um, yeah. thanks. Uh, you can have your room back when you come back from the States and I'm in college. <laughs> yeah. Does that, does that about wrap, wrap up discussion after you for you, Alex? I'd say so. All right, all right, all right. So, um, the next, our next segment is actually going to be a reprise of a segment we did a few episodes ago. I think it was episode 14. It was the Sleep Drunk Advice column. And so we're reprising that. And this time, a bunch of totally real, um, not fabricated, 100% legitimate um, listeners have written into the show. And they've asked us some questions. 
And so I think I, I picked a few. I picked some that would orient more towards me, some that or, orient more towards you, Alex, and then a couple that I think orient for both of us. So I think I'll start off with, I didn't um, prepare anything for this. with our, our, our good friend um, Thick Sauce Rick Ross 12 on MySpace. And there is a sleep drop MySpace. I went ahead and made one. I, I'm not kidding. That's actually a thing. <laughs> Of course you did. <laughs> um, if it's not, actually, I'm not sure if I completely count set up, but it will be set up by the time this goes live. I guarantee that there's a sleep drug MySpace. Go <laughs> so add us on MySpace. The show notes. Um, so he writes, I'm currently learning how to Mongolian throat sing, along with how to pay- play the didgeridoo, which has been which has related techniques. What advice would you give for a beginner at both throat singing and music in general? So for those who don't know, me and Alex are um, seasoned <laughs> step, some Mongolian throat singers. We regularly go out to the um, steps and belt out loud melodies. So Alex, why don't you give us some of your, your Kargara advice since that is your specialty? Um, so I think the key to that is to uh, sort of just kind of clear your throat and mm-hmm. keep clearing it until you can just do it constantly and just produce a really low tone that's even lower than your voice usually mm-hmm. even goes. And Don't give us an example. Just kind of like put your throat by the mic. <laughs> <clears throat> you know? Yeah, okay. Kind of like that sort of deal. Mm-hmm. And like my voice, I can't, I can't speak that low. It's just not possible. Yeah. But I can make that noise because you're you're like vibrating a weird extra little thing in your yeah, throat like these that isn't otherwise used. Like extra stuff in your throat called your false vocal cord. So that's what's vibrating. It's weird how people yeah. figured this out that long ago. Yeah. <laughs> It is the world's oldest vocal art. And I guess quick primer for those you don't know, there's three main styles of um, Mongolian throat singing or Tuvan throat singing. There's Kargara, Kume, and Sigit. So the reason we learned this is a topic for another episode because that'll make a really good topic. Definitely. But yeah. um, long story short, Alex has a like aptitude for Kargara, and I have an aptitude for Kume and Sigit, which is derivative. And Alex, that is all your Kargara, is there any other Kargara advice? Besides, um, drink a lot of water. <laughs> because drink a lot of water, go slowly, or else you'll ruin your uh, ruin your throat. Yeah, and um, just keep practicing; otherwise, you'll lose it. Yeah, yeah. And I think it, it's especially true with Kume and Sigit. And I think it's a music thing in general. Is just you have to keep practicing, and like nothing comes instantly. But for Kume, what you want to do is you basically go like. Uh, you do that, and you kind of, if you feel along your throat, you'll feel a place where you'll, like, you'll feel some popping. So what you want to do is you want to squeeze that with your, initially with your hands, and then try and sing. And it'll be very painful when you start. Very, very painful. And so what you have to do is you have to train your throat. So what you're pressing is your larynx. And you train your throat to accept that. So that's the fet, that's a basic drone called a horketeer. And like that's, the, that's what drives the kume and sigit sound. So, Kargara's the lower, lower tone, Kume is a mid tone. So, what you do is after that, you shape your mouth and create a really large chamber, and then open your lips into like, a, into like an ooh initially, like make that kind of sound once you've kind of got Horketeer down. And if you do it correctly, you have to like fiddle around a bit, but you'll create an overtone with your oral cavity, and you can shape that through your lips. So, that's Kume, that's like the most fundamental style. And then Sigit is the super cool derivative of Kume, which is really hard, but I'm decent at. And I'll just give an example of what it sounds like. I'm, I'm a little bit out of practice, but here we go. Um. <clears throat> what do your house guests think of you? <laughs> um, I'm not sure. Um, it's going into a wall, and there's a monitor absorbing it, so hopefully they don't hear it. Um. <laughs> But so that higher pitched tone is created by basically what you're going to do is you're going to take that cavity and shrink it by placing your tongue against your molars and creating a very small gap between your front teeth. And it takes a lot of practice, but once you get it down, it's really cool. And I think that's our main advice. There's a good tutorial by a guy called Jerry Walsh on YouTube that I think the both of us followed. At least I did. That I, I no, like definitely it. you. He, I think he did a pretty he did a pretty good job, and I like it. So we'll put a link to that in um, the show notes. I think I think that's all of our advice, and I think for music in general, it's the same thing. You just you have to practice. Like there was a point where I practiced literally every day. Like I'd start throat singing, and Alex would like text me from two doors down to stop reading, because <laughs> it really does carry. It's, but, it, it does. That was in a building made of brick walls, too. Yes. So. Yes. Um, actually, they made a cinder block, block. and cinder block is a violation of housing policy at our university. The whole building was a violation of housing policy. It's this problem. We're going to have to address that, so we're going to have to demolish the building. We'll have to do that when we get back to campus. I'll bring a sledgehammer. Yep. Um, and so, 
Our our next um, person comes from Twitter. Um, it's it's at totally not real Donald Trump, and he asks, "I'm thinking of getting into anime, all caps, but I'm not sure where to start, and I don't want to be judged. This will be Are you sure that huge isn't from Elon Musk for America, um, and that that's it." <laughs> so I'm, I'm seeing that this one was from Elon Musk. <laughs> Um, no, it is from totally not um, at totally not real Donald Trump. That is that is the Twitter handle. Um, you know what? It is what it is. <laughs> but if I'm being honest, I think the first thing you should do is people think of anime like cartoons, like kids shows, which in a lot of cases is true. But in many cases, a lot of shows are written with older audiences in mind. Like there's some stuff about just kind of like being a nine to five corporate slave and the struggles from that and it's meant to relate to that kind of audience and so i think it really depends on what you're interested in if you want some general suggestions full metal alchemist is just fantastic all around and i think it's a good gateway show it's fantasy sci-fi and also take it's a bit subversive in a lot of ways like it challenges a lot uh like i can put it, it gets a little bit like testy with topics about religion and about state authority but it's interesting highly recommend it um other good shows are. Uh, I just got a message from Alex on Slack. Let me see what this is. It's opening up a Twitter window. Uh, <laughs> um, that's going to the show notes. I'm not going to explain what it is. I'm not. I just go to the show notes, <laughs> click it. You will. You will see it, and that. That's that. That is that. That is just going in and done. I'm not. I'm not saying what that is. I'm just, I'm just rolling with it, you know. I'm just, just rolling with it. No, it's all good. We are. <laughs> what the? <Yeah>. F- <laughs> that man wants to go to Mars. He does. He's getting to Mars. I don't know if he is, but he wants to. <laughs> go in the show notes. Click it. That's all I'm gonna say. Um, what is this, this my anime picture? right? I think another show that Alex really likes um, is um, Nande Koko ni Sensei Ga. Um, oh what the hell are you here, teacher? God. Alex loves that show. If you like looking at a dumpster fire and ethical... something uh, a, a scenario where you could bring up ethical quandaries, but you don't because you're trashy, watch that. It's currently airing, I think, or it might be done soon. Um, if you're into more mature things, um, A Silent Voice. Is, I haven't seen it, but I've heard really good. And Garden of Words are both really good movies. And I think it's just explore, be open-minded, and give it a try. So, Alex, next question's no, for you. Next no, question's for you. It's awful. I see that. That's why that was, that was uh, a question for me. That was it, a, I, I just wanted to die. So okay, fair. I mean, you know, Hitler wanted Jews to die, but you know, can we talk about how the model? Oh, what? Excuse me. <laughs> that, that's a maybe. That's a it's fifty-fifty on being left in. Anyway, can we talk about how the Model 3 has like a knockoff Mario Kart game built into it? It does? And it, it appears to use the steering wheel and pedals so you can like play it while you're charging. That's pretty sick. That's pretty sick. <laughs> Only Tesla. <laughs> That's really sick. Um, anyway, I need but, to stop looking at this. So the next, the next um, one comes from Craig, who says, he's pl- he says, I'm planning on building an epic battle station PC. What parts would you recommend for a modest budget? What should I prioritize? So I just want you to take this one because I believe you've built a computer before, right? I have built a computer before. It's been years and I've I sold the computer that I built a year ago next month. So honestly, I haven't been keeping up on um, on modern components at all. So that's always fun. But definitely the things you need to prioritize are solid state storage always have solid state storage at least for your operating system and you can yeah. store your other stuff on a, yeah. on hard drives but have your operating system on solid state it makes such a difference yeah your boot times will be slashed in half or at least yeah for those of you who like may be unaware um solid state drives like so a standard hard drive has a bunch of disks and they're really slow and crap and so a solid state drive doesn't have disks and is fast and good yes but they're also slightly more expensive yes. per, uh, per gigabyte but i think it's very much worth it yes definitely so and then from there, prioritize your um, processor and GPU accordingly, depending on how much you plan on gaming or how much you care about graphics, etc. Um, to future-proof, definitely go with uh, 
higher than you need because there's just always something new that comes out that yeah. requires more yeah. and more. Um, people always like, especially children, like to talk about RAM and literally just make sure you have enough. Sixteen gigabytes is more than enough for most yeah. people. Um, as far as the processors go, I know AT and T, not AT and T. Wow, um, <laughs> AMD. Yes, holy. AMD and AT and T are you not know, the Bell same. Bell Labs company. came out with uh, <laughs> the the Unix operating system. No, <laughs> so. I know AMD has their new Ryzen line. I don't know about any of the stats on any of this stuff, but just just do your research, honestly, yeah. and don't listen to like one source. Like yeah. listen to a combination of everyone, and you'll find what works for you. Um, I hear the Intel Eight series runs a little hot, but like I've always been an Intel person myself because it just seemed or. Intel and NVIDIA because it just seems to run more smoothly than AMD. Like, I've always had issues yeah. with AMD drivers and stuff, but you know, it's personal taste. Yeah. I think all my stuff is not Intel like and a fanboy well. or whatnot. You just, you do you. Yeah. And what about sourcing? Where, where would you recommend buying parts from? So, I've heard Newegg is popular, but I'm, I know there's other the, options. Uh, right? Just really the cheapest uh, vendor. Uh, okay. Newegg generally has some really good deals on computer components. Amazon, nothing wrong with yep. an old Amazon purchase. Can't go wrong with Amazon ebay's good just you know know what you're looking for know who you're buying from know what your return policy is very important with computer components um and micro center if you live near a micro center they're phenomenal do not buy your computer parts from best buy oh god forbid you buy them from best buy i've seen it happen and it makes me want to die it's not good don't buy that's really all there is to computers it people make it out to be such a a big deal that you know somebody can build a computer it's like putting legos together you just have to know where they go yeah and actually another follow-up question would you prioritize cpu or gpu i would personally honestly prioritize cpu anymore because i don't really do any graphics processing things um if you're using a high-res display definitely have a better gpu and always have a gpu honestly like yeah Unless you're actually just never going to do anything powerful at all. Like but if it's a Facebook point, browser, just, I feel like at that point it doesn't make sense to build. But if you're not going to do anything powerful with it. All right. Get a but, book. but yeah. For a GPU, you know, if you're, if you're playing games all the time, that's like the whole point of the computer. Or if you plan on doing lots of video editing, definitely prioritize the GPU. Mm-hmm. Not a whole, like not, maybe equally with the CPU. It's just really important that you have a good CPU, but a GPU also can hold you back if you don't have enough. Yeah. And another question. How many million colors should the RGB LEDs have? It should have 16.7 million. (laughs) And how quickly should I build it? Those kind of stats really just make me want to die. They're so stupid. But I mean, that being said, like, what should my zero to seizure time be in terms of flashing? Like, what would we say is an ideal zero to seizure time? Um, I would I would give you two milliseconds. Like you okay. want to be able to seize almost instantly. Okay, good, good to know, good to know. <laughs> RGB, RGB can eat my. And I mean, I hear the way it's no. Cool, okay, so if you're all but... about like having your stuff look good, I RGB can be used for that. It doesn't RGB doesn't have to be stupid. Right? Yeah, no, of course, but a lot so, of times it is. <laughs> with my custom computer that I sold, I had it in a white case with uh like you know some black parts some white parts then i had a motherboard that was the msi z97 sli crate z97 s sli crate edition Mm -hmm. and that was like a themed board and it had it was it was like a like a sneak was like its mascot and it had black and white on the board okay my gpu unfortunately was not color scheme but it was just like black so it was good enough black goes with most and I had a water cooler with RGB and I just sort of synced everything to be the same color. Okay. So I had internal LEDs that I installed myself in the case that would reflect off of all the white parts that I had in there to just be whatever color I wanted it to be. I wouldn't set it to change colors. I would just have it set to a, a constant color. Yeah. And I'd have the water pump be the same color. Yeah. No, I totally agree with that. Like if I'm planning on building a PC at some point, not in the near future, but maybe within the next five years, and I'm definitely going to put RGBs, but... Like when I talk about RGB, like if you're you indecisive, people, do that because then yeah. you can make your computer yeah, exactly. whatever color you want it to yeah. be. Yeah, and I feel like just you can set it up and like for example, I just pick a theme color and roll with that theme color. I, but I wouldn't have it flashing a rainbow a billion colors per second, giving people seizures. 
because that's and then dumb. I just like and frankly really distracting. Like, <laughs> like a nice uh, teal cyan, cyan, yeah. whatever yeah. Yeah, you're supposed to say. I think it's cyan. Yeah, I think cyan. So yeah. my keyboard has RGB functionality right now. I just have it set to like slowly wave down the keyboard between green and, and blue. That's just that's fine. Is pleasing to look at. Yeah. See, I felt and my I mouse just... is like a, a weird teal color. The buttons on the side. See, I've always just found that like. I don't know how you would have it flashing. So, like, I, I actually kind of like the slow look. Like, I used to. I mean, I still have it. I have in like an Alienware laptop, like the M14XR2. <laughs> Very old, barely works, but it, it did RGB before RGB was cool. And so I tried you having it flash. Sounds like a jet engine part too. Yeah, yeah. It's very much. I'll see if I can get recording of the sound at some point. And I don't have it with me, but if I ever get a chance, I'll record some sound off. It sounds like a jet engine. It's Where randomly it? shuts off. Car? But it's. Oh no, I have I have it at my uncle's place back back in the mm. states. And so, the, like, so it, it wasn't, like, smoother to me. It had, like, the keyboard was in four sectors. And I used to have it kind of try and flush, but I, whenever I tried to game, I found that really distracting. I feel like that's just, like, I would be like that with any really big flashing RGB setup in general. Because I feel like having one color means I can focus more on what I'm doing. Yeah, I, I've always preferred yeah. one color. I, yeah. I can't stand flashing. Yeah. If you want some theme options, white and cyan, black and red is cool if you want to be, like, MKBHD and most people. Black and white's nice. Uh, you can really do whatever you yeah, want with yeah. it. I just, you know, obviously prioritize, prioritize well, what components you have in the computer yeah. over the color scheme. It's like, it's don't drop 300 bucks on RGBs and use a Pentium processor. <laughs> I meant, like, don't buy a, a shitty GPU just oh, because yeah, it course. fits your color of scheme. But, of course, you know. yeah, yeah. That too. But also, like, I feel like that kind of stuff should be an afterthought. Like, I feel like building the actual tower should yeah, come like first. Like, decide on the then components, peripherals. and then if you can, get one that, like, fits your color scheme. Yeah. That's... Yeah. Or build your color scheme around your GPU. A lot of GPUs come in fine. Okay, colors. And you can think you work with it. But our, our next question comes from an Anon, who writes, I'll be starting college soon. What is your number one piece of advice? If you have to pick one thing, what would that advice be? And I feel that we could elaborate this on a later episode, but what'd you say is your just like single piece of advice? Oh boy. Um, come out of your shell. Okay. You, you got to leave your dorm room every now and then you got to go meet people. Mm -hmm. I wasn't great at it, but at least I did it. And yep. I know people that like hated college because they just went there and kept up with only their, you know, conventional online friends and shit and just sat there and played video games during all their free time. That's just a miserable existence. Yeah. See, I think mine would be get your schedule set up correctly. And oh, yeah, definitely. I think this is there's a few parameters to this. I think first off, unless you really are a morning person, really try and minimize morning classes. Because I think this has like been statistically proven, most people will perform more poorly in a morning class. And so what I normally do is a lot of schools, at least for us, they offered registration pretty early on, like in the like in the summer, right, for the fall semester. Or yeah, if you're a freshman, it'll be in the summer for the fall semester. And so what you can do is the moment that becomes available, if you know what class you have to take, just jump on it, get yourself registered. A lot of schools will have a tool that lets you like build a schedule, like and work with timings to make sure you get all the classes you need. Um, mm -hmm. I personally would recommend having your earliest class be around 1030. That's how mine is next semester. Mine last semester was, yeah, was all at 12. Yeah, my classes start at 1030. I think it's just a good time because yeah. it's not too late in the day. You but can still it's, get a uh, morning. It's not, you know, it's, you can still yeah. wake up at a reasonable time. Yeah. And you can so, still have an evening, you know, you can yeah. go to bed and still get eight hours of sleep every yep. day. Yep. Um, sleep is something to definitely prioritize yes. in college. Yes. I will not get enough naturally prioritize my sleep, but I know a lot of people struggle with getting enough. Always set your schedule up so that you can get enough sleep because if you don't get enough yeah. sleep, you're not going to be happy yeah. and you're not going to be productive. And I think going off sleep, have a consistent wake time. I think that's really important is having yes, always a, have a consistent yeah. um going to bed and waking time because yeah. you know just the more you do that the healthier you are yeah exactly and the and better also, you'll feel like, in the day once you have your circadian rhythm locked in like you'll be a lot less tired like because i know my first semester my schedule was all over the place i had like a couple of like eight o'clock classes i had one that was the middle of the day one that was a 10 and so for that entire semester i was just tired because my circadian rhythm just didn't know what to do because i didn't have a consistent wake up time and so i think having just having a set time to wake up it, it's super helpful and it keeps keeps your keeps yourself balanced keep yourself like locked in and good good to go and also 
use rape my professor, but don't take it necessarily as gospel. Yeah, just kind of like wait what people say based on how intelligible their writing is and yeah. you know, take everything people say with a grain of salt. Yeah, yeah. Because everyone has good like anomalistic how however you say that. They have biases. I think. Yeah, Sorry they have their it. biases. They they have, you know, good and bad experiences yeah. when other people don't. And, yeah. and I think they're obviously more inclined to go yeah. write about it if it was a bad experience than a good yeah. experience. And I, I think a good way to think about it is that like the people that are writing on Rate My Professor either really liked the class or really hated it. There's very few middle of the road people yeah. on Rate My Professor. So it's yeah, a like good resource. Different, there's, no, there's really no reason yeah. for them to go yeah. get on there and write anything. Yeah, exactly. About it. So it's a and good I don't, resource. There's other, yeah. there's other resources that you can use. Like Rate My Professor isn't the best. Um, there are some other ones that can, you know, give you some more objective data, like the average grades yeah. that people received using that professor mm-hmm. for that class. And you can go see that. I, I know one that I've used, it didn't have a whole lot of data and a lot of it was outdated. So I, I don't even, I won't bother finding it and recommending it, but there are tools like that that exist. Also, there are um, there is ways generally, uh, at least our school has it, where you can go online and see what people have um, put for their comments, not comments, but like their ratings in the course evaluations that everyone has to fill out at the end of the semester. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Actually, does Glassdoor do professor reviews, or is it just employers? I think Glassdoor is just employers, right? Glassdoor is just employers. Yeah. yeah, okay. Well, I was going to say Glassdoor, but yeah, no. But yeah, I think just take, even I think in general, take those. I think it's important to look at them, because if a professor has a bunch of bad reviews, that probably means something. But don't take it for gospel, and take a chance. Like, you might get a bad professor, but I think even having a crap professor can be a learning experience in its own way. Like, you learn how to deal with bad professors, which I think is an important skill, because you... Especially once you get further into your major, you will get bad professors, I think, because it becomes more and more specialized. There's fewer people doing it, and so you take what you get. Yeah, fewer people doing it, and then, you know, professors don't have to have any education in education. They just kind of know the topic, and then their their skill at teaching is just a... Read. To have it. uh, Lecture. I mean, actually, Thicke, the, the man himself, did actually have an education degree. So that's always good. Something going I don't for really him. agree with his way of teaching, but I, you know, yeah, whatever. I don't agree with many things for Thicky. And then there's you know there's always anomalies like the the yes. person that I'm taking my uh, let's let's call him Dave Davidson. <laughs> Dave Davidson. Okay. <laughs> it makes it makes too much sense. Um, a lobby knows. Yeah, I do. That's the person I'm taking my Calc three class with over the summer at the local community college. He is just a a math guy. I don't think he has any background in education, but he's a phenomenal teacher. Yeah. Great guy. Wants to see everyone succeed. And uh, I wish he was teaching at our university. Yeah. I think another good example of that is like Joseph Hart, the wonderful Joseph Hart, who I'm actually going to be working under next semester. But he, he, I think he was a graduate student. I think he's graduated now, but he's just really cool guy and cares about teaching and is pretty good at it. And I worked well with him. So, yeah, there's there's anomalies. And generally speaking, like, there is some vetting that professors have to go through. It's not just like, oh, hey, you get the job. They have to go through at least a bit of vetting. And so hopefully they'll all at least be competent and don't fall asleep in class. Um, you know who I'm referencing, Alex. Wait, what? You remember the head nodding, almost hitting, almost hitting the um, keyboard? Oh my god, yes. <laughs> uh, how could I forget? Harold, I think. Visual visual Herald, culture professor. Yeah, that's, that's fell asleep in class once. Time. Wow. You get oddballs. I mean, yeah, you're, there's just... Yeah. It's unavoidable. Yep. You'll, you'll find one that you yes. hate. I mean, you also find professors you love. Yeah. Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> I feel like you're a lot more likely to find a professor you'll hate than one you'll love. <laughs> Yep. It really do just yeah. be like that sometimes. I mean, because being shit is a lot easier than being good. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. I think one last question for the episode. Um, at Jeff Bezos asks, where can I find the Sleep Drunk podcast? Alex, why don't you tell him? Well, um, Jeff, the Sleep Drunk podcast can be found on any of your favorite podcasting platforms. I don't know what you use, but um, if you use Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, or probably even more, you'll be able to find it right there. 
And that being said, thank you for listening to this episode of Sleep Drunk. Just remember that the first person to get Song of the Day on any of our social media or via email will get a shout out in the next episode. Song of the Day for the last episode was, it was Roundabout by Yes. Um, Great song. If you're a JoJo fan, you know it. And yeah, we'll catch you next week. We'll catch you next week. (laughs) 